Mother's Day. How many here have or had a mom? I saw some hands that did not go up. I'm just wondering if they got scraped out of a chemical tube. <laughs> Let me try that again. How many here ever had a mom? <laughs> there they go. They're all up. Thank you. Whew. I was concerned. Maybe we had a few aliens among us. But we have not. Yes, it's Mother's Day. Now, how many of you use Twitter? Oh, there's some hands going up. For those of you who don't, and you don't know anything about Twitter, Twitter, Twitter is just a website that allows you to post very short statements. Actually, you're allowed 140 to 160 characters. Now, characters means, you know, a letter or a space, a hyphen, an explanation, okay, a uh, 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 semicolon. <laughs> Some of you realize I got this uh, problem with my front tooth, and I got a flipper tooth in. They pulled my tooth, and I got an artificial tooth in. And so some words just, I can't get them out, and it's a little, little hard. But anyway, you get 140 to 160 characters, and uh, there's a book that is just like Twitter in the Bible. It is the book of Proverbs. Proverbs are all statements that are just like tweets. That's what they call what you write on a Twitter account, you write a tweet. And there are 140 to 160 characters. Some of them are a lot less than that because in the Hebrew language, they don't put the vowels. They only write the consonants. So if you only did that on your Twitter account, you could probably write twice as much as you're writing right now because uh, the vowels are taking up so much space. But they didn't write the vowels. They just assumed you knew what vowels went with what consonants. And so that saved them a lot of paper space. Now, later in time, when the language was dying and people weren't speaking it, a group called Masoretes went through and they wrote vowels in. Ah, not really in. They put them above the letters and below the letters in a series of dots and dashes to make up the vowels so people later could read it and know how the words were supposed to be vocalized. And those who follow that are called those who are reading a Masoretic text of the Hebrew Bible. But every one of these are like tweets. So God's got a Twitter account right in the Bible called Proverbs. And each one of these tweets is an independent unit, but sometimes they're strung together, series, or grouped together as a bunch. The ones we're looking at today all have to do with women and moms. And they're not all put together, but I'm putting them together for you today. The first one that God gives a tweet. This is God's tweet to the smart mom, smart mom. Now notice what the text says here. This is God's tweet to you. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. So he's not talking about the mom, not telling the mom, but he's telling the reader of the tweet, don't forsake your mother's teaching. They will be a garland of grace for your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Your mother's teaching. Now that implies your mother knows something. I know it was amazing how much she learned from your teenage years to your 20 years. It implies that she knows something. In fact, in this text, there's a, there's a tweet just before it. And that tweet before it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. So when he says, do not forsake your mother's teaching, and the fear of the Lord is a, the start of all knowledge, he's really saying, listen to what your mother has to say about fearing the Lord. Now that assumes that she knows something about fearing the Lord. You know, it's pretty hard to teach somebody something you don't know. Isn't that right? When was the last time you were asked to fix somebody's computer and you said, well, maybe we better wait till the grandkids get here? <laughs> I can't figure out this phone. Well, maybe you better give it to the grandson. <laughs> it's easy to teach 
when you know what you're teaching, it is very difficult to teach when you don't know what you're supposed to be teaching. Years ago, I took a job at the Public Defender's Office downtown Detroit, and I had a job that I took that I didn't know anything really about. But they liked me, and I got through the, I got through the interview process. Every night, I'd go home and cram so I would know at least something I could do the next day at work, because I was trying to teach. Now, then they asked me to put on a workshop for all the public defenders in the state of Michigan. I was cramming like crazy. I was cramming like, why? I'm teaching something I don't know anything about. I had to learn it to teach it, right? This passage assumes that your mom is smart and she knows something to teach you. Now, my mom taught me how to tie my shoes. I still tie them the very same way today. Isn't that amazing? My mom taught me that. My mom taught me that. This passage really, I don't think, is just talking about tying your shoes. It's talking about the fear of the Lord. So how do you teach the fear of the Lord? Well, my mom taught it kind of in a silent way by having me up on Sunday morning, dressed for church. My mom, every, every Sunday morning, when I'd get all dressed up, and back then, you know, we, we wore slacks. We had our Sunday clothes. Shoes that were shined. White shirt. I had a little bow tie. My mom had made me a little sport coat to go with that. I'd get that all on, and then she'd say to me, Dennis, you look just like a preacher. Are you kidding me? Woo! Already, at, you know, just a child, four or five years old. My mom's telling me I look like... How does she do that? Just subtly. She's teaching. One of the most subtle ways my mom was smart is every day she got up and got my dad off to work, and then she cracked open her Bible with... I got it right here. The daily bread. Daily bread. How many of you know what the daily bread is? Raise your hands. Yeah, okay. The new ones have just come in. They're in the office. I'll try to get them out on the tables. I meant to do that this morning. The daily bread, every day, is just one little page. Just a short little page. And there's a passage at the top. You crack open your Bible, you read that passage. Uh, then there's a devotional talk, and there's always like a little line or two of poetry at the bottom. And then it... it Got a guide to read through your Bible in a year. Well, my mom, every morning, got up. She got my dad off to work. I don't know if they did it together, but I know my mom did it because it was in her Bible, not my dad's. This daily bread was found in that day's part of the Bible. Every day, every day, my mom started her day out with some time with God. That's what a smart mom does. That's what God's tweeting. Smart mom. There's another tweet in the Bible, in the book of uh, Proverbs. It says, a kind-hearted woman gains respect, but a ruthless, uh, ruthless men only gain wealth. A kind-hearted woman gains respect. The word kind-hearted is actually the Hebrew word grace. Most translations put it, a gracious woman gains respect. I think this is a very interesting proverb. Most women are not looking for respect. You do know that, right? Most women are looking for love. Most men are really not looking for love. Most men are really looking for respect. Now, I know it was Aretha Franklin said, sang the song, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Give me a little, give me a little. She didn't write it. Shock. <laughs> Otis Redding wrote it. He wrote it for his wife. He wanted her to give him a little respect. But she made it popular. Women, did you ever go to the card store and buy a card? All the cards are written by women. 
they say all these things in the card to a woman that they would like to hear as a woman. So a guy picks up a card for his wife, and it says everything like a woman would say it, not like he would say it. Now, when it comes to writing men's cards, they do the exact same thing. Guy doesn't want to have in there, I love you. He wants in there, I, I respect you. There's no cards like that. And so all he wants is a little respect. I think that's really important, because watch. The gracious woman. Grace is the opposite of legalistic law. The law has with it, if you violate it, you get cursed. You pay a penalty. All right? Grace is, I give you what you don't deserve. She gives what you don't deserve, and she receives respect. <laughs> now, he is hard-handed. He's tough. The text says ruthless. Actually, it means the word itself means to put fear in your heart. So he comes down on you, and guess what? He only, get the word, only gets wealth. He doesn't get any respect. She gets everything he wants. He gets only stuff. What's he want? Respect. You see, the kind-hearted, the gracious person, a person's full of grace. So what is this thing, grace? There's an acronym that I came across years ago. G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. When a woman has grace, it's not God's riches, but it's the woman's riches at her expense. She seeks the other person's highest good no matter what. And what does she get? She gets respect. She gets respect. The very thing the man wants. She's got it. The next one is a beautiful mom. There's this tweet. Yeah, God, God has an eye for beauty. He does. It's right there. A beautiful woman right in the middle of the verse. But the verse is a little awkward. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout <laughs> is a beautiful woman who has or shows no discretion. Whoa. No discretion. She has no taste. That's the way the Hebrew puts it. She has no taste. A beautiful woman who has no taste, okay, I can see that right now you're thinking of a woman who's a beautiful woman, but her taste in style is terrible. No, nope, I don't think that's what he's got in mind at all. <laughs> She has no taste, no discretion. She, she, when it comes to spiritual things, she has no class. So in God's eyes, although she's externally beautiful, God says she looks like a pig to me. Whoa. Pretty low. Now my mom, I... I she never won a beauty contest. Now, that didn't mean she wasn't interested in beauty. She, she was. My mom was a beautician. That's what she, she was a certified, she practicing beautician. But so beauty was a real important thing. She never entered a contest, never won a contest. But I'm going to tell you something. On the man's level, she was not the beauty queen. She was not Miss Michigan, Miss Missouri. She wasn't Miss USA, not Miss World, none of that. But in God's eyes... God said, hey, even the pig on the outward appearance is a beautiful woman on the inside when they know me. When they know me. We got to stop trying to please everybody on the horizontal level and start focusing on the Lord. Because when we do, you're beautiful in God's sight. <laughs> you're beautiful in God's sight. God does not look on the outward appearance, it tells us in the scripture, but he looks on the heart. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth, and he's looking on the hearts, and what does he see? I think God sees a lot of beautiful women here because your heart's right with God. Isn't that really what you want in the end? 
The next one I, I, I noticed, the next tweet that God has in this Twitter account called Proverbs is, a wise woman builds her house. Now we got a lady here and she's in the construction business, but I don't think that's what this passage is talking about. She builds her house, but if you put the word hold on the end, she builds her household, it takes on a whole different nuance. Because it's not about brick and mortar, it's not about two by fours and two by sixes, it's not about rafters and shingles, it's about, no, no, not about any of that. The woman who builds her household, she, she is putting in the foundation when the child is born. And she's nurturing that child. She's singing Christian lullabies. Uh, she's raising that child and giving a foundation and, and going through a, 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 a devotional for the child. As a devotional is for a very young child, the, the Bible in pictures for little eyes. And it's mostly just pictures and you're telling the story. I was going through the Bible and picture for little eyes with my, my son, my two sons. My third son come along, yep, him too. But my oldest son, we got to the picture of Jesus on the cross. And I told him the story. He said, Dad, I want Jesus to come into my heart too. And right there, about five years old, he prayed and received Christ. Isn't that awesome? Wise moms, wise moms. They build at the foundation level. Then they nurture along the way in those childhood years. You bring them to Sunday school, or in our case, the kids' program. You bring them, and they're taught, and they're instructed. But you're at home. You're, 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 you're also teaching and instilling and inculcating into your child's life those principles and uh, things about Christ. Then in the teen years, you're encouraging them. You've you got to start letting go, and you've got to start giving them the responsibility to do it on their own. You're saying, hey, have you prayed today? Have you read the Word today? What has God spoken to you today? It's hard to do that if you're not doing it yourself, right? Because oh. they'll come back, well, I don't know, what did you read today? What did you pray today? And so it's that mom, she's building her household to the point that she's able to let them go. And what they learned in her building, they build in their lives too. There's a word but in there. Every time you see that but, you know what it means. Let's negate everything before it because this is what follows. With her own hands, the foolish one tears down house. How does she do that? Number one thing, neglect. She neglects her own spiritual life, and then she neglects her children, her household's spiritual life. Neglect. But the wise mom, he says, he tweets here, the wise mom, she built her house. Then there's the grandmom. You know what that is? A grandma. How many grandmas here? Good. Notice what the text says here. Children's children. Okay, so my child's child makes it my grandchild. A grandson, granddaughter are the crown to the aged. Amen? I should have put a crown in her hair, right? Crown in her hair. And the parents are the pride of their children. The older the child gets, the more proud they become of their parents. All right? right? For a while there, they said, I hate you. You know, how a little later, they said, how did you get so smart? <laughs> and then it's finally, I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah. A grandma. If I were to ask, I mean, they're the crown to the age. If I were to ask, okay, moms, particularly grandmoms, grandma, do you have a grandchild brag photo book in your purse? Or do you got them all on your phone? How many have that? How many? Come on, Grandma. How many, you, you immediately pull out pictures of your grandkids. You got those somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. See? Why? They are your crown. This is your prize. Your prize. Wow. Here's another tweet. It's the honored mom. The honored mom. 
Do not despise your mother when she is old. So I got one up here. I don't normally call the ladies in the church old. But Ruth is in her 100th year. Right, Ruth? Are you ready for this? This is the Bethany Daily Double. We've got another mom to be honored with a Bethany pen. All right. And I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. She's in her 100th year. That means last December 3rd, she had her 99th year birthday. Isn't that correct? This, it's just a few months away. December 3rd, 2021, because 1921, wow, a hundred years. You know, it tells us in the New Testament that we are to honor our father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it might go well with you and that you will live long on the earth. How many here like the idea of living long on the earth? There's some of you who didn't raise your hand. What? How many here like to live short on the earth? <laughs> when you honor your mother and your father, when you honor your mother, there's a, she's the matriarch of our church. Ruth is. And she loves Jesus. She loves the Lord. And God has blessed her. And we are blessed by her. You honor your mother and father. You know, anytime that I, I talk about honoring, there's always someone who is thinking this. You just don't know my mom. <laughs> and you know what? You're right. My mom was abusive. My mom wasn't there. My mom abandoned me. And they go down a whole list. They go a whole list. We still fight neck and neck. Listen, this, there's no option to this. You honor, you say, even the abusive parent, I'm going to tell you right, if you cannot find anything else to honor her for, you honor her because she had such a wonderful kid. <laughs> you getting the picture? There's at least one thing she did right. And I'm going to tell you this, there's a lot more there too, if you wouldn't just be so negative. Yeah, there's, the parents aren't perfect. I, I'm running a risk here, I have to ask this question, are there any perfect parents here? <laughs> What's that commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness? You get the picture, none of us were perfect parents. And I love my mom. My mom, I believe my mom is the greatest mom on planet Earth. But my mom had some flaws. Come on, let's be, let's be real. Let's, we're all sinners, right? We need the saving grace of Jesus to save us from our sins. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, she called Jesus her Savior, which meant she had failures. She had sin that needed to be forgiven by the sinless Son of God. Even Mother Teresa, I don't care who you pick, there is flaws. And you are to honor, not the negative, but the positive in your mother's life. And you can do that today. Do not despise your mother when she is old. No, you honor her. You honor her. The word honor is a very interesting word. In the Old Testament, the word is kavod. It means to be, get this, heavy. I don't know what that means, okay? You feed them more. The idea is you just keep laying it on them. You keep laying it on them. You pile the praise on them. You pile it, and so they are just laden down with all of your praise. You honor you. Your mom. You honor your mom. Honor her today. The next one is a joyous mom. This is a tweet from God that goes like this. May your father and mother be glad 
May she who gave you birth rejoice. As a pastor, I'd visit mothers after they've had babies, and there was only one in all of mothers I visited that said, Wow, that was fun. <laughs> I figured they really had her drugged up. <laughs> yeah. But it's not her that's having the joy. May she who gave you birth, not at the time of birth, had joy. But because of your life, you make her joyful. Now, I want to connect the dots in the Scripture, okay? <clears throat> in the New Testament, in 3 John, verse 4, because there's only one chapter, so 3 John, verse 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Wait a second. What gives joy? My children walk in the truth. Now, go with me one more dot. One more dot. Jesus said, I am am the way, the truth, and the life. Can I shorten that? I am the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in the truth. May she who gave you birth rejoice. You know what brings joy to a godly mother? That her children know Jesus Christ as Savior and are walking in his footsteps. You want to make mom happy? You walk in the footsteps of Jesus. And your mom will be happy if she is a godly mom at all. She knows God, knows God at all. She will, be, she will be delighted and elated. It's funny how that all works. I was the four of five kids. And my younger brother was my mom's favorite. He was the baby, right? Until I almost lost my life. The two other guys that experimented the drugs with me, they died. I made it. I usurped his position as my mom's favorite because I was the son in her eyes that died and came back. And my brother became very competitive with me to try to get his position back. It's called birth order psychology. <laughs> my mom rejoiced that her son was alive and then, when I was called to ministry, it was like, oh my goodness, my poor brother fighting for his position? Oh my goodness. He'd go have lunch with her almost every day because he didn't work too far. But boy, when I came in, it was my favorite meal. It was... <laughs> my mom rejoiced that I had lived and she rejoiced. Now, she loved my brother, too. She really did. Because he was a godly guy. But she rejoiced in our walk with the Lord. You know what really wore my mom's heart out? Was my brother who didn't live for the Lord. He didn't. It was her burden to the day she died. He was not walking in the truth. You want to give your mom great joy? You connect with Jesus and you walk with Jesus and your mom will be elated that my child is walking with the Lord. Give her great joy. I come to this last one and it's a praiseworthy mom. It's found in Proverbs 31. And this little tweet says, Charm is deceitful. A lot of charming people are out there and then you realize that they have evil motives for all their charm. They're really trying to sell you on something. Uh, they're trying, they're coming in through the back door. They have an ulterior motive through all that charm. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting. I know what some of you are thinking. Yeah, the fleet has already set sail for some of these people. It is. You, you, you can get the facelift, the tummy tuck, uh, you can use all the oily ole to uh, moisturize your face. You can get a rear end lift. I don't care what it is. You can do all of that. Time is against you. 
Beauty is fleeting. There's that word but again. I love this one because it negates everything before it. But a woman who fears the Lord, oh, there it is, takes us all the way back to the very first one. She's smart because fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. And here she's got the fear of the Lord. This fear of the Lord that she has in her heart is a reason to praise her. The fear of the Lord, the woman who fears the Lord, is to be praised. You know what the word praise means? Here, I'm going to tell you what it means. It means to brag about. That's what it all means. When I praise God, I'm just bragging about how great God is. When I brag about myself, that's boasting and pride. But when I brag about my mom, it's praise. That's what I'm saying. Today, you need to find some things to brag about your mom and tell her because she's a praiseworthy mom. Now, I know that there are some guys who are saying, well, wait a minute. She's not my mom. She's my wife. <laughs> I get this every year. Just up a, a, a tweet or two, it says this. Her children arise and call her blessed. See, they're praising her. Oh, God, you're so blessed. You know what they're saying? You're blessed you had me. <laughs> you're blessed, Mom. Her husband also, and he, what is it? Praises her. He brags on her. The worst thing a man can do is trash his wife. I used to have this plaque that says, the greatest thing that a father can do for his children is to love their mother. Whoa. The greatest thing I can do for my kids is to love their mom. Yeah, but what if you're divorced? The greatest thing I can do for my children is to love their mom. Not in a marriage, but love them as their mom. I don't trash her. I don't talk her down. I never... My, my kids, even though I went through a divorce that I did not want, my kids know that I never, ever say a bad thing about their mother. Never. That is their mother. I want them to, I want them to brag on their mom. No, oh, I love my kids, and they brag on their stepmom, my wife. And I'm happy about that. But you know, if I ragged on their mom, they would be less likely to brag about my wife. See how that works? The husband also, he praises her, he brags about her. Now, it's easy for me to do this morning because my wife is teaching kids' life. <laughs> but I know she's going to watch this. <laughs> so I still got to be careful what I say. But I have a wonderful wife. She supports me. Some of you, when, when there's something that goes a little difficult here at church, you call her. You don't call me, you call her. I know she's a social butterfly, but she's not hired here. <laughs> it's not her job to fix everything here. And it's not her job to tell me to fix everything here. <laughs> You're getting my drift. And so you don't need to call her. In fact, I even have an administrative assistant that you could call. <laughs> My wife, uh, she doesn't complain about it. And she'll sometimes say, when her plate is full, she'll say, you need to go call somebody else because my plate is full. But she just takes it on. She, she supports me in the ministry. It's wonderful. I should brag about that. Um, I brag about her as being the greatest grandma in the world. See, I wasn't there to see her raise her kids. But I'm watching her raise the grandkids. And she loves them. She is the greatest grandma on earth. And I would tell her that to her face. Sometimes I think she loves the grandkids more than she loves me. <laughs> I get a little hurt over that, right? Yeah. She is a great prayer warrior. Some of you know this. That woman prays more than I do, I'm telling you. I'm being honest. You see, you can't brag about somebody with falsehoods. 
You can't. Especially the wife, they know the truth. She is a prayer warrior. And I mean that, a warrior. She prays, she has a list, she checks them off when they get answered. She is a prayer warrior. She sometimes makes me, I'm the pastor, I'm supposed to be the one, the prayer warrior. But she makes me look so small. See, that's bragging. That's putting, that's giving praise and credit that is true. It's true. God says, Happy Mother's Day, all you women. You see, the Lord has tweeted this for you to honor your smart mom, and you've got one. You're, you're to honor her today. Listen, you're to honor that gracious, kind hearted mom. You give her respect that you don't even give a man. Listen. You honor the beautiful mom. Get that off of there. Yes, you honor that beautiful mom who is discreet. She knows how to control her tongue and speak the right appropriate things at the right time. You, you, you honor her. Listen, he says, you honor the wise mom who is building into your life. You honor her. Listen, you honor your grandma. And you honor our matriarch, that amazing mom Ruth. You, you, you honor her. And those other matriarchs in your family. Listen, you, you honor your joyous mom. You see, because by honoring her, that makes her have joy. You honor her. You honor your praiseworthy mom and your wives. You honor them. That's what Mother's Day is all about. Taking time. You say, Mom, I love you, and here's why. And you start stating the reason you honor, you honor, you honor, you honor. That's Mother's Day. We can all do it. We can all do it. We can honor our moms. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray for every woman here, and uh, every man too. We all had moms. May we today, in some time of our day, call, text, go see, open up our mouths, and brag about our mom in her presence for a little while. For some of us, our moms are gone on. We can still brag about them, Lord. We can tell other people how wonderful, how gracious, how beautiful. How amazing our moms were and how it changed our lives. We know that will glorify you, Lord. You've tweeted these out to us and so that we would know how to go about honoring mom today. Bless us in doing that. In Jesus' name, amen. We do have a gift.